Chase or S turn, depending on where in the world you learned it, is probably the most popular entrance into Tandem Charleston from side by side. Just to choose one at random for clarity's sake, in this video I'll be calling it the S turn. And I love it. It tears across the floor. It is super fancy and because it's a basic move, there are so many variations and modifications you can make to add spice and suspense and personality and to take it someplace new. Hi everybody, I'm Laura. Thanks for coming to dance with me today. In this video, I'll be following and my friend AJ Howard will be leading. <laughs> In this video, you'll learn the basic chase or S turn, the Brooks, you heard me, a turning tandem Charleston variation that is used in all kinds of other transitions, and technique to make it happen. First, Patreon. Thank you, people of Patreon, for helping to make this video free for everyone in the world, including you. It's a voluntary subscription, so if you want to help them out, the link's in the description. First, here's how AJ and I do the basic S turn from four different angles. Notice AJ's signature point. Go at your own pace. If you need to slow us down, there's a gear icon at the bottom right of your screen. Click on it and select your setting. Now here's AJ's footwork. Follow along. Start with a basic Charleston. Then we have rock step one, kick two, kick three, kick four, kick tandem. Let's do it again. Basic. And then a rock step one, two, three, four, tandem. Now let's take that footwork and make that S turn shape. Again, start with the basic. Rock step, kick, turn, kick, kick, tandem. Rock step, kick, turn, kick, kick, tandem. Follows, I feel like my footwork makes a lot of sense depending on the context of the movement. So let's watch it and see if we can figure it out together. There are two different rhythms that I do depending on the situation. If the chase doesn't feel very dramatic or if I can't feel that it's coming, I do a rock step. After the basic, AJ leads a tuck turn, so I do my six count Charleston footwork. Rock step, kick step, kick step and then the four count entrance footwork. Rock step, kick step, tandem. Let's see all that in context. If the chase travels a lot, or if I can feel it coming and want to be fancy, I do a double kick. So my footwork is, start with the basic. Rock step, kick step, double kick, kick step, tandem. Let's see that one more time. Again, start with the basic. Rock, step, kick, step, double, kick, kick, step, tandem. In my opinion, something important I do to make it feel good, if the move really travels, I need to travel with it to the end. Remember that even during the basic, AJ and I have really active standing legs. See a little bit of air between our feet and the ground between every beat. This air really makes horizontal movement possible. Look at how much my standing leg travels between each beat, both on the way to the redirection in open position and on the way to tandem. You can also see how my foot, even though it's hopping across the ground, stays under my body so I stay balanced and in control. If you want counts, here's the move with counts. 
Start with the tandem basic. Now, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. I've also heard this is a 10 count move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Or a six count plus four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. However you want to think of it, you think of it that way. If you want a refresher on tandem, an exit out of tandem, and more technique on the S-turn, Brooks and I have a video on that covering it in depth. There's a link in the description. Because the S-turn and tandem are basic moves, there are so many ways of personalizing them. And here are some of my favorites. First off, the Brooks name from my husband, Brooks Prumo, and I've heard it called this from a number of different people, so I'm gonna lean into it. Let's check it out from a few different angles. You can see after AJ does the S-turn you already know and love, he basically just does another S-turn that starts from tandem and goes back into tandem. Let's break this down. It starts with what could be a basic tandem push-out. See how AJ puts his left hand on the left side of my back for the push-out. Then check out the timing of the turn. You can see that I'm still facing forward for the kick of the push-out, and then I begin to turn on that step. After the push out, you can see AJ brings out my right hand and then pushes into my palm to create that turn. I'm trying to turn at the rate AJ gives me. You can see I'm not spinning into my arm or away from my arm. My arm is the same distance from my torso at the beginning of the spin and the end of the spin. That's what causes the pace of my turn and therefore the run run rhythm. After that turn, AJ catches my hand, and then it's basically the last half of the S turn. Here it is with counts. If we imagine that the beginning of the Brooks starts on count one, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. The whole sequence together would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five. Variation two, turning the tandem. The way I think about it, the S turn is a turn and it feels really good as a follow to so just continue that momentum. My body continues around the turn, and my feet do the same rhythm they do in the original. But since my body is moving, my feet move down the line as well. You can see that as in the basic S-turn and the Brooks, my feet are not only doing that handy hop thing, but with the exception of the rock step, are also staying under my body. To try this out, just turn a little, and as you get more comfortable, turn more and more. It feels really good for me to do a full 180 degrees, so it completes that line. To lead it, AJ just turns his body. Mostly. To lead it, AJ just keeps those tandem arms a swinging while he confidently turns his body. I'm in between his arms, keeping my arms facing front, so I just turn with him and try to match the rate that he turns. If AJ doesn't turn, I feel that his arms don't move, so I don't turn either. Check out the position of his shoulders on the rock step. You can tell almost immediately if we're going to turn or not. AJ is also making this move easier by stopping his progression down the line so I can get past him and getting out of my way so I have a clear path to continue down the line and turn around. If 
I hit tandem and then stop immediately out of the S turn, it's really difficult for AJ to restart my momentum, so he probably wouldn't do this variation. It's my job to have the default of turning and then to be aware if AJ stops my momentum by not turning. There are so many different things that you can do with the S turn. That's one of the reasons why it's such an exciting move. As a matter of fact, I have so many favorite S-turn variations that I couldn't fit them all in this video. So stay tuned for the next video where AJ and I will cover how to use the S-turn to get into other Charleston positions. It will be so exciting and hopefully very useful. I hope you had fun and learned a lot. And if you did, click like and subscribe and comment and do all that YouTube algorithm stuff. If you like the music, it's the Brooks Promo Orchestra and you can buy it through a link in the description. And 50% of the money that I get from this YouTube channel goes towards organizations that support African diasporic artists and art to honor the founders of this dance. And the best way to learn how to do this dance is to dance. Do that, Lindy Hop. <laughs>